Hello scholars, welcome back. Mr. Hinkle here. We're talking about what's in the ocean. Well, there's water in the ocean. Water is a compound. There's salt in the ocean, dissolved solids. And there's gases in the ocean. We're trying to understand chemical oceanography and looking at the chemistry. So let's talk about it. Today's lecture, identify major dissolved gases in the ocean and discuss the distribution of them and their properties. So the three gases we're looking at is oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. And this is oxygen in the form of O2, nitrogen in the form of N2, and CO2. There's also dissolved gases. These gases are crucial for marine ecosystems because they are part of biogeochemical cycles, which is a wildly cool concept. Bio means life. Geo means earth. Chemical, we see here in the form of gases and cycles. So biogeochemical cycles are how certain, certain compounds move through the earth. From the air to the oceans, to the life, to the rocks, what are the pathways? And all ecosystems rely on biogeochemical cycles. Oxygen is a big one. We've got a couple of fish, bloop, 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 bloop. Breathe in oxygen, fish in the ocean breathing ox oxygen. So oxygen is vital for marine organisms that breathe oxygen. Oxygen supports aerobic respiration and we get dissolved oxygen in the water column by marine plants, algae, phytoplankton, and also through the animals that are living there. Okay, let's write key, what are we doing here? Dissolved gases, and I know it's on the board, but I think, or it's on the lecture, but I think when it makes its way onto the board, it's like, oh, this is important. This is something to know. So one of our big gases is oxygen. Oxygen is highest at the surface, which means that there is a vertical variation of oxygen in the water column. And this makes sense because at the surface, we have the air-sea connection. Air, uh, oxygen from the atmosphere dissolves into the ocean, and then it's also produced by phytoplankton through photosynthesis. Dissolved oxygen declines with depth to a minimum, right around 1,000 meters. This is also where light can no longer penetrate. There's no more photosynthesis. Photosynthesis occurs in about the upper 200 meters, can occur where there is light down to about a thousand meters, one kilometer. So we call this the ocean minimum layer. And we also see interesting uh, variability between the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean, having to do everything with uh, thermohaline circulation and the connection of the Atlantic um, forming. Mm, Deep water, uh, deep water formation in the North Atlantic from these polar regions. So maybe a little bit of another discussion, but oxygen varies vertically and by ocean. Pretty cool. Let's keep going. So if oxygen is wildly important for life, a lack of oxygen means that marine life is harmed. And we see this. Fish can live in areas that have high dissolved oxygen, less oxygen, less fish. When there's low oxygen, we call it hypoxic, and when conditions mean no oxygen, it's anoxic conditions, and that leads to what are called dead zones. Currently, Earth is experiencing over 400 dead zones. They're usually located in coastal areas because the process of creating a dead zone is eutrophication, where you have the um, artificial stimulation of algaes, causing algae blooms, from fertilizers that originate on land and make their way to the ocean. Not the only way it can happen, but it is a big way that this is happening. So eutrophication creates low oxygen environments, which leads to dead zones. This is kind of a big deal that I might just be going over because we're really focused on gases and not environmental impacts. But 
We need oxygen in the oceans. It's very important. Carbon dioxide. Utilized by primary producers, these are marine phytoplankton that breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen, responsible for about 50% of the Earth's uh, atmospheric oxygen. And here is the biogeochemical cycle for carbon. The atmosphere into land, into the ocean, back into the atmosphere, it's in trees, it's in plants and vegetation, it's altered because of human impacts, which is uh, really what's creating the climate crisis that we're experiencing. So here in particular for oceans, right, let's not get too environmental. For oceans, we have absorption of carbon into the atmosphere and then outgassing of carbon from the ocean to the atmosphere. So again, there is a vertical variation of carbon dioxide because primary producers are using carbon dioxide at the top of the water column. Remember, this is where photosynthesis occurs. Less photosynthesis, more carbon dioxide. So the deeper you go, again, to about that oxygen minimum layer, same thing and then it becomes relatively constant. We have a difference in Pacific versus Atlantic once again. So the Pacific is about twice the size of the Atlantic. It's the biggest ocean on our Earth. And while oceans have generally similar characteristics, there are slight differences. And in the case of dissolved gases, we do see these differences between the Pacific and the Atlantic. When Carbon dioxide is absorbed into the ocean. It mixes with water. There is a chemical reaction that creates carbonic acid that leads to a series of chemical reactions that create bicarbonate and carbonate, leaving hydroxide or hydrogen ions, H plus, here. Uh, now, this is important, as we'll see in my discussion of ocean acidification. The carbonate buffering system allows organisms to take carbonate and build their shells with it. Also produce uh, leaving hydrogen in the oceans. Now, when you have too much hydrogen in the oceans, it makes conditions acidic and it thereby disrupts marine ecosystems. Again, check out ocean acidification. But just know, this is a natural process that is necessary for healthy marine ecosystems. Nitrogen, dun, da, 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 dun, da, da, da. this is our last of the big three. What is air? Anybody know? Air is mostly nitrogen. About three quarters nitrogen, about one quarter oxygen, and then very small amount of trace gases. Well, nitrogen, it's the most abundant gas, right? Nitrogen dissolves into the surface. And then there are bacteria in the ocean that actually take that nitrogen. And another series of chemical reactions which fix the atmospheric nitrogen into available types that is necessary for photosynthesis, for primary productivity. Primary productivity needs two things, sunlight and nutrients. And the nutrients are in the forms of nitrate and nitrite. And it's part of this series of reactions that occurs when atmospheric nitrogen enters the ocean and that nitrogen becomes available for phytoplankton to reproduce, base of the food web in marine ecosystems. Through this, there's a whole process where the N2 can be converted back into uh, where the used, let me uh, restate. Through this chemical reaction, the nutrients can be utilized and then used by denitrifiers, uh, another group of bacteria that convert the used nutrients back into available N2 so that the process can happen all over again. So nitrogen, wildly important, a necessary nutrient that's available 
and offered into the marine environment through atmospheric nitrogen. Shout outs, there's methane in the ocean, there's nitrous oxide in the ocean. They're in much smaller proportions, but uh, methane has carbon. It's important in the global carbon cycle. Uh, nitrous oxide can uh, contribute to the greenhouse effect and uh, disrupts the nitrogen cycle. So smaller amounts available. This is by no means the exhaustive list, but these are the big three important dissolved gases. So the ocean contains a lot of things fish, sharks, water, salts, and dissolved gases. And understanding the distribution of these dissolved gases is crucial to understand how oceans circulate, how marine ecosystems exist, to understand global biogeochemical cycles, and understanding the chemistry of our oceans. So thank you so much, and I will see you again.